Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be looking at a locus problem with absolute value. We have the absolute value of z over z minus 1 equals 2 and we're going to try to find the set of z values that satisfies this equation, which means we're trying to find the locus. Okay, so I'm going to be making two attempts. Let's start with the first one. So for these kinds of questions, most of the time, we replace z with x plus yi, or you can do a plus bi. The name of the channel is a plus bi, but guess what? We can still use x plus yi. Okay, if you do that, you're going to get something like this. The z is going to be x plus yi, and at the bottom, we're going to have x minus 1, because we are supposed to subtract this from the real part, plus the imaginary part stays the same, and this is equal to 2. Now, with my first method, I'm going to go ahead and use the conjugates. So the conjugate for the denominator is basically x minus 1 minus yi. You just negate the imaginary part. And then you're going to multiply this by its conjugate, right? And then take the absolute value, and that's equal to 2. Let's go ahead and simplify at the bottom and on top. When you multiply these two things, notice that a squared plus b squared, you get sum of two squares. So at the bottom, you're going to have x minus 1 squared plus y squared. It's not difference, it's a sum. And on top, we can kind of multiply x times x minus 1, x squared minus x, and then minus x, y, i, and then plus x minus 1 times y, i, which you can write as x, y, i minus y, i. And then finally, y, i times negative y, i is going to be negative y squared, i squared, which is positive y squared. Great. x, y, i cancels out, leaving us with something simpler. And of course, don't forget the absolute value and set it equal to 2. Now we can kind of write this as x squared plus y squared minus x minus y, i over x minus 1 squared plus y squared. Now at this point, obviously, it would make sense if you separated the real and imaginary parts. So you can kind of write it like this. This minus this divided by the bottom. Makes sense? So the absolute value is going to be then this expression right here, right, squared plus this negative y over, because that's supposed to be the imaginary part, squared, right? And then square root of the whole thing. And that's equal to 2. Well, this is going to get real messy. So let's leave it at that. Let's not finish this method because I'm going to show you the second method. So sorry about that, but it's just going to be incomplete. If you really wanted to go ahead and complete this problem, the first method, and then check your work against the results from the second method because I'm going to tell you what it is, hopefully you'll get the same thing. If not, then you probably made a mistake. Or maybe I made a mistake. Who knows, right? Okay. Anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. And now we can also talk a little bit about generalities. So the second method actually uses some identities, some shortcuts, which is cool. You should always use them as long as your professor is okay. I mean, they should be. So if you have the absolute value of a quotient, you can definitely separate them. That's a great advantage, I have to tell you. And this is still equal to 2. And then, of course, we can do cross multiplication. Obviously, z cannot equal 1 and it could never equal 1. So we're good. Let's multiply both sides. At this point, I'm thinking, is there a geometric interpretation for this equation? Because absolute value is all about distance, right? So the absolute value of z means it's distance from 0. And the absolute value of z minus 1 means distance between, I think we talked about this in one of the videos, between z and 1. So if you consider the argon plane, 1 is going to be a, on the real axis right here. And z, if z is up here, I don't know where it is, so I'm just going to assume it's somewhere up here. Let's say z is up here. I just couldn't pick a color for z. Okay, this is 1 and that's z. It's basically saying that the distance from 0, so in other words, the modulus for z is 2 times the distance between z and 1. So whatever this distance is, let's call that d, this is supposed to be 2d. 2d or not 2d. Okay, make sense? So we're going to try to find the set of points that satisfy that type of relationship. But of course, there seems to be a geometric interpretation, but can you just use that to find 
the solutions. That's a good question. I'm going to leave it open and continue with my second approach. OK, ready? So now, since we've gotten to this point, we can go ahead and actually use our old trick, replacing z with x plus y i. And then here it's going to be x minus 1 plus y. It's the same thing, but much simpler because we separated the absolute values. We don't want to do the absolute value of a quotient. That's going to be very messy. So now we get the following. Square root of x squared plus y squared equals 2 times the square root of x plus 1 squared plus y squared. What does this look like to you? At this point, think about what the shape is going to be. Is that a hyperbola? Is that a parabola? Is that an ellipse? Is that a circle? Or is that some kind of other things, right? And then we'll check our work. Now, let's square both sides. And then we get x squared plus y squared four times. Let me, let me expand this. x squared minus 2x plus 1 plus y squared. Let me distribute it. 4x squared, and then I want to write the 4y squared, and then minus 8x plus 4. And now let's go ahead and put everything on the same side. Subtract x squared, subtract y squared. You get 3x squared plus 3y squared minus 8x plus 4 equals 0. And then I'm going to divide everything by 3. Yes. But here's the thing. We have the same coefficient for x squared and y squared. And there is no xy term. If you think about it in terms of conics, you probably got the shape. Anyways, let's continue. Divide by 3. We'll get some fractions, but don't worry, we'll fix them real quick. And then I kind of want to put these together. x squared minus 8 over 3x. I want to complete the square. How do you complete the square? Take the coefficient of x. What's half of that? 4 thirds. Square it. You got it. 16 over 9 is what I need to add to make it a perfect square. You got it. But I can't just add out of the blue, and that's a blue pen, right? Because I also have to subtract it. Okay? Yellow pen, blue pen. Anyways, you get the idea. So now we got a perfect square here and then some type of remainders, right? So let's go ahead and finalize this. This is x minus 4 over 3 squared. And what happened to y squared? I just made it disappear, hoax pokes, right? In the meantime, it just went somewhere. So let's go ahead and make a little room for our beautiful y squared. And of course, that's a plus sign, right? Great. So that's going to be a negative number because we're going to throw that on the right hand side. That's going to be a positive plus y squared. If you subtract them, you're going to get negative 4 over 9, which is going to be positive 4 over 9. Awesome. What does that look like to you? If you said circle, yeah, you got it. This is the equation of a circle with center 4 third comma 0 and radius 2 thirds. Because remember, this is R squared, right? Great. So the locus is a circle. Let's go ahead and take a look. Yes, this is the circle. And of course, it's written in radical form. But, you know, Desmos is pretty smart in that sense. So it can give us the circle equation. As you can see, that's the center. Now pick a point on the circle and see if you can kind of visually satisfy the condition that we talked about earlier. Remember, the distance between z and 1. Where is 1, by the way? Oh, yeah, here we go. I lost 1. And the distance between 0 and z. You see what I'm talking about? There you go. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.